ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the January 20th Chino City Council meeting. If you'll please all rise and join me in the flag salute. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Have a seat. Where'd the... Oh, there she is. <laughs> I lost you in the crowd. Uh, under ceremonials, uh, I think we have some Pop Warner people behind me. Yep. They had a phenomenal year, unbelievable. Uh, these kids did uh, what well, I didn't think would ever happen, and uh, you guys did a bang up job, and of course the girls cheered them on, right ladies? That's right. And before, I wanna start giving out certificates to uh, uh, the cheerleaders, but before I call the president up, Eddie uh, Braithwaite to join me, uh, I think we ought to get a little cheer from the cheerleaders, what do you think? You're the cheer mom, obviously. No? Cheer oh, you're the coach. Why don't you come forward? And Eddie, uh, the president of Chino Pop Warner. And, okay, you can, you can come up and you can assist on the giving out the certificates. Uh, are you Chandra? I'm Chandra. Chandra. That's why she's a good coach. She don't take no beats. Sorry. You're Devon. I'm Devin. <laughs> How do, how do you, how do you, oh. Okay, we're going to start with the cheerleaders, and um, what I'll do is call out the name, and you can hand the certificate to them. Uh, God, I'm afraid to say the girl's name now. That's me. Oh, yeah, that's you. Yes. Chandra. Perfect. Whew, Alston, right? Perfect. Cheer head coach, we'd like to present that to you. Congratulations. <laughs> Devin Walker, assistant. Thank you. Congratulations. Well, oh, they got a lot of names there, don't they? She's not here tonight. Oh, she's not here? Yeah. Well, we have one for Kelsey Bradford Evans, a student demonstrator. You can take that. She's at Chino High School. Oh, she is? Okay. Uh, Cheyenne Rollison, student demonstrator. Cheyenne, you're here. Oh, is that your daughter? Congratulations. All right. Uh, Elizabeth Castaneda, association cheer. She's our new coordinator. She's not here. All right. Okay. When may they get the cheerleaders? Now. Now? Okay. Hannah Armstrong. You gonna give it up to you? Come on. Okay. Cora Armstrong. Congratulations. Mia Gadinas. Mia, congratulations. Samantha Govia. Congratulations. Lexi Limon. Lexi, congratulations. Melanie Martinez. Congratulations. Oh, your girls, their hands are cold. What'd you do, freeze them out there? Uh, Ariel Mendoza. Ariel, congratulations. Genesis Rios. Congratulations. Cassandra Ruiz. Cassandra, congratulations. Janelle Valdez. Did you bring your family with you or something? Valerie Vargas. Huh? What? 
This is the last one? Yes. What am I missing? Oh, no, she's got hers. Uh, Raquel Walker. Let's give a hand to all the cheerleaders. Uh, before I start with the, uh, the, the football team, uh, could I have the head coach up here? We want to interview you a little bit before we... Uh, uh, Ron Sue, hurry. Daniel? Is this on? There we go. Um, so let's start with uh, the conference championship game. Tell us who you played and and what the score was, and then proceed into the regional and all of that stuff. You want to look this way, the camera. Uh, here. <laughs> you know what? Conference championship. Who? Uh, I, High, Desert. High Desert. Oh, that was. Uh, yeah, that was a that was a game. That was a great what was game. The score? It was a uh, 18-16. 16-14. Yeah. Ooh. Muddy. Yeah, it's it muddy cool. up to our pretty much our knees. Oh, it was, really? Yeah, it was great. It was a great game. Yeah. Great wow. game. Uh, one of the games you'll always remember because of the mud and the rain and, you know, and a little bit of chaos that ensued, but, you know, it was a great game. It was I remember game. 20 years ago we played Rialto in the storm rain and we yeah. beat them in the fourth overtime. <laughs> yeah. and, and they were uh, undefeated. The PATs, uh, those, uh, those, those made the difference. Those yeah. were game winners. Great. Those then where'd you go winners. from there? Then from there we went to uh, Westcon, right, or the semi-regional, semi -regional. and then we played uh, Rancho Bernardo. Rancho Bernardo, yeah. What was the score there? And they were technically a D1 type of team, and they once they lost, they went to D2, uh -huh. and uh, they were big boys, and we did a real good job. We what did a bang-up job. That was a uh, yeah. 20 to 18. You yeah, every game by two points. Yeah, that's that what right. we we're saying. Those. Uh, Coach, you know, Coach always say these PATs are going to make a difference, and one and point is good did. as a million, and they did. Yeah, you know, great. They, they they saved us. And where'd you go from uh, semi-regional? Then we went to uh, regional, the championship. <laughs> then we went to uh, no, we went to uh, Huntington Beach. We played Huntington Beach, correct? Huntington Beach yeah, Huntington this Beach. This was for the southern, southern regional title. This was for the Westcon. This was for the whole western region. Oh, yeah. the whole western region. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, what was the score of that one? That was actually we. Uh, that was 22 days. Yeah, we put a whooping on them. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we put a whooping good. on them, man. Good, uh, that good. was that was the boys. Uh, we told the boys during that practice. I said, uh, "You guys, if you guys play defense like you did that week before, it's going to be a different story." And uh, they made they fixed their mistakes and wow. did a great job. So that earned you the right to go to Florida. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, and you uh, go to Florida. Yeah. And you had to win so many games to get to the Super Bowl in your division, correct? We had to win. We had. We had, we had to win two games, right. technically. So the first one we played, we played, uh, who was that? Westland. Westland. And they had been there four years. They were out of Massachusetts. And they had been there four years in a row. Oh. So they, uh, we played them, and uh, we didn't have any film on them, so we couldn't break down any film, which, you know, makes it tough. Oh. But uh, we did, and we did, we did, and then uh, we lost. Unfortunately, it was a 30, 36 to 6. But then our next game, uh, consolation game, we uh, we did real well. We won that game, so we went uh, one and one. I think we ended, what did we end up all all in all? We what, fifth? Twelve was that game. Yeah. Thirty-eight, twelve. You ended up thirteen and one. For the season. Yeah, thirteen and one. Thirteen and one in the but season. But I think we ended up what about fifth? We're calculating yeah. it. Fifth, fifth yeah, in the that's nation. What I heard, yeah. Fifth in the nation. So that's well, not they, bad. they ended up in their division, fifth in the nation. So. So yeah. Can't so that was pretty that. good. That was pretty Can't good. beat that. Why don't you stay up here, coach, and uh, give us a hand with the certificates? Daniel Murray. Oh, that's you. <laughs> and Ruben Lopez, assistant coach. Ruben. Congratulations. Matt McCain. I've heard that name somewhere before. Isn't that big old drink of water your son, the quarterback? Yeah, that's him. Takes after his mom. <laughs> Yeah, he's good looking. Robert Walls, assistant coach. Robert? Congratulations. Oh. Okay. Richard Guerrero, assistant coach. Richard? Congratulations. Richard Corubius. Congratulations. 
Okay. Uh, the hardest job in the whole league. I know, I've been there. Uh, Rachel Murray, the team parent. Congratulations. The team parent is the brains of the whole operation, trust me. Kendra Goulet, coach trainee. She's not here. Zachary Murray, team assistant. Not here. Okay, Jack Watson. Congratulations, Jack. Good job. Douglas Walls. Doug, congratulations. Mariano Verdugas. Duzgo. Duzgo. Congratulations. Philip Sierra. Oh, good job, buddy. Christopher Bland, the second. Christopher, good job, Christopher. Ronnie. Over Rubius. <laughs> oh, I know. I, tell me about it. Brian Engelin. Brian, congratulations. Daniel Fajardo. Daniel, congratulations. <laughs> Lucas Fry. Lucas, good job. Congratulations. Jake Garcia. Good job, Jake. Congratulations. Larry Goodman. Larry, good job, buddy. Robert Guerrero Rodriguez. Robert, congratulations. Joseph Hanistoff. Joseph? Congratulations. Jacobson Laporte. Fight your way through there, Jacob. Congratulations. Ruben Lopez. Ruben, good job. Samuel Magnadan. Magnadan. Sam? Good job. Cole McCain. Cole, good job. Nor Norman Morales. Hello. Congratulations. Joseph Murray. Joseph. Alejandro Navarro Silva. Alejandro. Congratulations. Adrian Parda Mendez. Congratulations. Christopher Perez. Chris. Congratulations. Trini Rodriguez the third. Trini? Congratulations. All right, I hope we didn't miss anybody. Okay, very good. Well, congratulations, gentlemen. You, did a, you made Chino proud. You did a good job. And uh, I know for a fact, if you go on to high school and play in college, you'll always remember uh, this season with uh, the Chino Pop Warner Colts. You'll remember this the rest of your life. That was quite an experience for you. So uh, we're awfully proud of you. And uh, if you, whether you go to Lugo or you go to Chino, uh, I want to wish you all good luck if you continue to play football. Uh, the, the school, the high school will be lucky to get any of you guys and gals cheerleading. So uh, does anybody want to take pictures still? Thanks, Coach. Good job. Good job, man. <laughs> If anybody wants to take pictures, you can come on up. That was silly thing to say. Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Just a reminder that this will be on uh, Channel 3 twice a day for two weeks. You'll be able to see it on cable, so. You're all TV stars. 
<laughs> yeah, you're live right now. You're live TV right now. One of the uh, most difficult things that happened when they won the, 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 the regional was they had to, in about a week, raise $40,000 to send the cheerleaders and the football players uh, to Florida. And so, huh? Oh, the cheer did your own. How much do you guys have to raise? 15 G's. So uh, to the cheer mom and the, and the executive board, that's a lot of money to raise in such a short period of time. So uh, a lot of stress. Braithwaite kept calling me crying over the phone. So yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. So. All right, gentlemen, ladies, thank you for being here. Congratulations. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Hey, Frank. My pleasure. My pleasure. Can I have a picture with you and my son? Sure. You better take a recess. Take a short recess. Uh, sure. We'll take a short recess and we'll be back. There you go.
these people and they'll call up the Okay. All right, folks, we're back live. Um, next on the uh, ceremonials, uh, the 20, 2015 Edwin Rhodes Community Service Award for January 20th, 2015. In March 1998, the Citizens Recognition Committee was established by the City Council to recognize individuals, past and present, for their positive contributions to the Chino community. The committee will be uh, presenting the Edwin Rhodes Community Service Award to persons who live or work in the city of Chino and have been outstanding examples of ethical conduct, leadership, and service. I'd like to call up the Citizens Recognition Committee, uh, Mr. Al McCombs, Linda Takauchi, Sylvia Orozco. Uh, no, is Reba's not here, is she? Reba Salter, why don't you folks come on up? Who's going to read this? Uh, I have a lightweight saying? copy. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I have a lightweight copy. Okay. It, it, it gets to be pretty heavy. <laughs> okay, City of Chino presents the Edwin Rhodes Community Service Award to Paul and Karen Larson. Yay. Paul and Karen. you folks come on up. It is exciting. Just I'm very up, there, wherever right you'd like right to right stand. That's good. There, there you go. Here, you hold it. It's yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You hold it together. Hold it together. <laughs> Paul and Karen Larson have brought an immeasurable amount of pleasure and entertainment to the Chino community through their lifelong dedication to promoting the arts. Together, they have dedicated thousands of hours to broaden cultural opportunities by providing a nurturing environment to educate and entertain both young and old in the realm of the theater arts. While offering the community an opportunity to express, exp excuse me, experience quality. It's easy when you're up here, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Nationally acclaimed theater productions close to home. The Larsons were instrumental in developing a partnership with the city of Chino to provide a public space dedicated to theater productions with early beginnings in a community center where auditions, workshops, rehearsals, and productions were held. Live theater arrived in Chino in 1984. In 1991, the 7th Street Theater officially opened in downtown Chino and has been home to hundreds of adult and children's productions over the years. Paul and Karen first met in high school and both graduated from Laverne College. They were married in 1975 and moved from the South Bay Area to Chino in 1980. Karen started teaching in 1975 at Richard Gerd Elementary School and later at Alicia Cortez Elementary School when it opened in 1978. Paul taught every grade level from second through eighth and was vice principal at several schools. He was the Chino Valley Unified School District Teacher of the Year in 1991. Paul and Karen ended their teaching careers together at Alicia Cortez Elementary School when they retired in June of 2012. Paul has served on boards of the California Arts Program and the California Educational Theater Association. Paul and Karen have included musical arts in their vast repertoire by founding the Fountain of Uke. Uke? <laughs> Uke. A youth and adult ukulele group. If you've oh. never heard them, you must. <laughs> it's excellent. Yeah. Their hard work and dedication has not gone unrecognized. In February 1996, they were honored at the Celebration of the Arts Dinner Dance by the Chino Community Center Corporation and at the Sweethearts Ball when the event was revived in 2011. The Larsons were also recipients of the California Parks and Recreation Society District 11's Layman of the Year Award in 2014. Paul first received the award in 1985. Karen was Chino's community hero in 2005. In retirement, they have continued their lifelong dedication to promoting the arts among children and adults. They have three adult children, Jessica, Jeff, and Jenna 
all of whom have been involved in theater. Well, very good. Let's give a round of applause to the Larson. So you're continuing uh, to do the theater and all yes, of that? Yes, we are. Still Stayed in, very active at the theater, uh, directed three shows within 15 months right oh after retiring, so it was a busy time. <laughs> yeah. and We're in the midst of working on the Kiwanis production right now. We have our wonderful <laughs> cast out there. And Shrek. And Shrek. Oh, and uh, oh, yeah. Hairspray yeah. coming up in the oh, summertime. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Directed by our daughter over there, Jessica. She's following in the family footsteps. Yes, she is. It's <laughs> a big footstep. So we have worked, and we have lived, and we have played in Chino for over 30 years. And very happily so. <laughs> well, it's a real honor to have you in our city, trust me. Uh, you guys have been a, a stalwart in the, in the entertainment part of our city, <laughs> uh, for sure. And uh, we're awfully proud of both of you and what you do for our community. And keep up the good work, and may God bless both of you. Well, thank you very much. Let's have a round of applause. <laughs> Oops, well, let me give you the other hand. There you, go. <laughs> you bet. That is great. Just wonderful. OK, we continue. The 2014 Chino Youth Sports Legends Award. Uh, we like to call it Jacob Zavala. Jacob, is he here? There he is. <laughs> Jacob was nominated by Shar and Julian Perez of the Chino AYSO, uh, Region 67, for his 19 years of dedicated service to the organization. Jacob was raised in Chino, Ura and began with AYSO as a youth and uh, participated in the first AYSO season in 1975. Wow. In 1995, Jacob returned to the organization as a coach to his oldest son and continued coaching through 2011. In 2014, as sports legend inductee, he was named to the honorary Grand Marshal of the Chino Youth Christmas Parade. Uh, his name will be proudly displayed at the Chino Neighborhood Activity Center. Congratulations. On behalf of the uh, City Council and the citizens of Chino, we'd like to present this sports legend uh, plaque to you for uh, Jacob Zalva, Zalva, Zalava, Zavala. I'm having a hard time tonight with names. In recognition of many years of dedicated service to the youth of the city of Chino. Thank you would um, like to say a few words? Did you have fun in the parade? Oh, yes, that was very fun. Was very nice. Uh, nice. You continue to be with AY? AY oh, AY yes, I, I do refereeing right now. So. Oh, you do? Yes. Well, good for you. And it's uh, so. people like this guy here that uh, really makes Chino a special place to live. Oh, I love living, living in Chino. Yeah. Very well, we're, so. we're proud to have you, too. Congratulations. Keep up much. the good work. Let's give a round of applause. <laughs> with the retirement of our chief, um, there's been several promotions made, and I'd like to call up our uh, chief of police, Karen Comstock, and we'll do the, we're going to do, she's going to do the uh, induction of the promotions of the Chino Police Department. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mary Yates and members of the City Council. It's my privilege to call our latest round of promotees up from the Chino Police Department. If you would please join me up front. Gentlemen. As the mayor said, we've recently had a couple of promotions of high-ranking officers within the Chino Police Department. So it is my privilege tonight right. to introduce Good you job. to this group of commanding That's officers great, who are going to now be That's tasked good. with leading the Chino Police Department into the future. My first introduction this evening is of Captain Wes Simmons. And Wes came to us as a recruit from the Fullerton Police Academy. He's worked several assignments throughout the department throughout his career, problem-oriented policing, a detective, professional standards. He's done a great job on all those assignments. His promotion lands him as the division commander to the support services division. Standing next to him is Corporal Ken Carlson, and Ken comes to us by way of the Santa Maria Police Department. 
Ken is a very, very diligent student of the law. He has also done a lot of research uh, in law enforcement. He is a fantastic investigator, a fantastic interviewer. He's done a great job at the Chino Police Department. With his promotion, he has been reassigned to the Detective Bureau and is currently working as a detective. Dustin Tomasic, many of you may have or may have not known his father who once worked for the Chino Police Department. There is now another Sergeant Tomasic at the Chino PD with the promotion of Sergeant Tomasic. He came to us as an entry level police officer at the Chino Police Department. He had a former career with America's Tire and Dustin has worked a multitude of different assignments including a traffic officer, he's worked in the detective bureau, and that's where he was recently promoted out of. He is now a field sergeant assigned to patrol. All right. Standing next to him is, for me, paying it forward, Jason Bomowski. He was one of our police explorers. I was his explorer advisor many, many moons ago. Jason has worked several assignments uh, in the department. He's worked on task forces, uh, a couple of very, very uh, high-end narco narcotics task forces. He's also worked in the detective bureau and has done a great job for us. Jason promoted out of the detective bureau and is now a sergeant assigned to patrol as well. Standing next to him is Lieutenant Brian Cobble, and Brian also came to us by way of the Fullerton Police Academy. Brian has held several assignments within the department to include a canine handler, a detective, he's also uh, supervised our traffic unit, rode a police motor, and Brian has now pr been promoted to a patrol bureau watch commander as a, as a lieutenant. Right. And next to Lieutenant Cobble is now Lieutenant Aaron Kelleher. And Aaron was also a police explorer many moons ago. He came to us to the Chino Police Department as a cadet, was also a dispatcher for us, left by way of the Los Angeles Police Department for a period of time. His family, he comes from a law enforcement family. His father also served with the LAPD. Aaron saw the error of his ways and returned to the Chino Police Department. Uh, later on in his career, we were happy to get him back. Aaron is probably best known for some of the work that he has done in our training unit. The Chino Police Department is renowned within the county for the excellent training that we provide, and Aaron has done a lot to move our organization forward in that way, as well as the use of force expert, Lieutenant Aaron Kelleher. Aaron, Aaron went 51 50 on you for a little bit there? He? Yes, he did. Aaron okay. did temporarily uh, lose his mind. That's 50, correct. 50, all right. So. <laughs> And certainly standing next to the, to the left of Lieutenant Keller is Corporal John Monroe. And John came to us by way of the Inglewood Police Department. He has held several assignments as well. He's been a school resource officer at Don Lugo. He's one of our firearms instructors. He was recently assigned to our problem or to, uh, our set team, our special enforcement team, where he worked uh, uh, narcotics violations back there in different investigations. John also is doing a great job for us. And John is also our police association president. John has now been promoted and he has a temporary assignment to the training unit until his return to patrol. Congratulations, John. All, right. all I know I can speak for all of these officers is that they, they probably don't want to take all the credit for their promotion because it takes the whole police department working together and uh, they bear some of the fruit of getting the promotion, but I can tell you, every one of them would say, if it wasn't the help of uh, supervisors or people underneath them, they would have never gotten the promotions. And uh, this is some of the Chino's finest, not all of them, because uh, uh, our police department is, uh, in my opinion, one of the best in the state of California. And uh, these gentlemen, uh, I know, are gonna lead their, uh, the younger people below them, so they'll be promoted someday. But uh, I can tell you, on behalf of the city council and the citizens, we're awfully proud of you and the department. Good job. Mayor, I just want to thank you again for your support of the Chino oh. Police Department. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Thanks, Chief. Okay, next on the agenda is public communications. 
I'd like to call up Adolfo Pacheco of the Clearview Church, who would like to lead us in an invocation. And for those of you who would like to participate, please rise. Thank you, Mayor, Council members. Um, I want to say I'm so very proud to be here and witness all these great things with the kids. And it's evidence that you, we start from the young and it, it continues on to the older. Uh, I want to be 102 years old and be here and, <laughs> and uh, see some great things happen. Please join me in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise. Father, we come in agreement, Father, for your word says, wherever two or more gather there in your name, there would your spirit be. So we invite you, Lord. We invite you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for the blessings of this city and for the city council members and for the mayor, Lord, and for all the leadership, Father, that are represented here and those that we can't even see, Father. I thank you, Lord, that the first things that come to the order here, Father, is character and integrity, honesty, courage, love and hope father are those things that are are strong father god in our in our city lord and i thank you for them lord i pray that you would continue to bless the city council lord bless their families lord bless the police officers and every other service organization that's represented here father i ask that you let them find favor in the eyes of man because they found favor in your eyes first lord continue to lead them and guide them father let this be a season father where restoration continues father that those things that were taken away and broken off father god will be restored i thank you for the season of transition we're in i thank you lord that you're not just moving people around but you're continuing to invest in our future and I thank you for these people I ask that you bless them keep them covered father God let the city be a light father which cannot be hid upon a hill Lord let this be the place where others might say this is the place where we shall return father for your blessings and we thank you for what you're doing Lord I ask that you sanctify these meetings father uh, let all these things be done in good conduct and in honesty father God we thank you for everything you're doing we praise you we give you glory glory and honor and praise. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Adolfo. Appreciate it. Next is uh, under public comment. I have one written request to speak. Uh, Mr. Glenn Durrington. Glenn? Yeah. My name is Glenn Durrington. I live in Chino. Uh, and uh, this is probably a bad day for me to be here. But anyway, <laughs> we came to Chino in 1941 in the sixth grade. And we would never have had a ceremony then like we had here tonight because we had D Street School. And that was pure and simple discrimination. But uh, out of that school, though, we had some really good people come out of that. We had, well, uh, Ruben Ayala was a state senator. We had a priest come out of my class, uh, about three teachers, uh, a mathematician, uh, an engineer, a Navy pilot. Well, he was a couple years behind me. Anyway, they all turned out to be pretty good people, turned out that, but still it was discriminatory. Uh, so anyway, when I was going to school, the first person I met was uh, Ray Edel, and he was, got on the bus first and he was in my class, so he always saved the seat for me. This was going along, and then December 7th come along. Three days later, no longer was raid around. They shipped them all off to camp somewhere. More discrimination. But they also did really good, I think, because, because maybe because they were being discriminated. They studied really good. They came back. When they left, they were uh, gardeners, strawberry growers, and just rough laborers. They came back. They went to college, they came back, and we had a judge, we had lots of really good people. And Ray, then he was uh, buying an F-86 over the Chosin Reservoir on patrol, and something happened, he lost his life. But we, they never knew whether he got shot down or his flight leader uh, misjudged and went into the swamp. More, but there was still more discrimination. Now we came to the worst case. We have a guy wanting to change it, the the, what do I want to call it? The thing on 33 acres by us, it's, it's our whatever it is for one home per acre. He wants to change it to 230 some homes per acre. And we're going to have a, a vote on it eventually. 
And this is going to be another discriminatory situation because the, most people at Concerns live across the street on Benson. They don't get to vote. The people down in the Ag Preserve, they get to vote. The people out by Los, Los Serranos, they get to vote. Well, not that's across the wars. Los Serranos don't get to vote. They won't get to vote. No. And the people on Benson don't get to vote because they live in Ontario. That's right. Okay. And that's discrimination. You, you admitted that. That's, that's discrim not discriminating. Yes, it is. Those people don't get to vote. And well, they got in they, Chino. That's why they don't that's get right. to vote. That's right. It's not their fault. It's, it's your fault for letting that guy change the zone. They're going to have extra traffic on their street. Their street is only going to be one lane. The other side in Chino will be two lanes at least because of the extra traffic. And that's, you don't call that discrimination against those people? It is. You need to either change the zoning and let only a certain group of people in a radius of a mile or half a mile vote. Forget the other people. They don't even know where Benson is. <laughs> I don't know about that, Glenn. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Do you think the people down in the Ag Preserve know where Benson is? I doubt it. So you need to change. And uh, I would like to see and on the agenda for your next meeting and discuss it, how you're going to change it. In fact, if those people down there would sue, I bet our, our city attorney would defend the issue against them. But morally, I don't think he would like to, but he would do it as his job. Oh, I have one other thing. I, my eyesight's not good. I would like to have you read it. Just the last paragraph there. Discrimination, treatment of, of or consideration of or making a distinction in favor of or against a person or thing based on the group, class, or category to which the person or thing belongs rather than an individual merit. Okay. Don't you think you're discriminating? We're not discriminating. Yes, no. you are. No, that's your opinion, Glenn. No, it's, I bet it's a whole lot of people living on the east side of Benson think the same thing. Well, number one, you're assuming we voted to... to, to uh, to uh, have have this uh, measure M, uh, and that was done back in the 80s, wasn't it? That's right. Or something? And has, it has Union? never lost, has it? Huh? It's never lost in the vote. Well, if you disagree with it, you better get out there and really campaign to have no. them vote your way. No, it's the people in Ontario. Well, they live in Ontario. They don't. Yes, they don't and, get you're, to vote. and you're. In fact, if it, it would be just like years ago. It should be railroad tracks down Vincent. They're on the other side of the tracks. Well, in order to change that, Glenn, it would have to be the state legislature to have to change that. No, no, you can change it. I can't let them vote in Ontario. Well, you can put limits on the voting areas. No, I, I, you no. want me to do that? I don't think so. <laughs> Not me. No. All you have to do is draw a one-mile radius circle around Benson <laughs> Avenue. <Avenue's laughs> Just that oh, easy. Huh? Yeah, we would be in court then. Okay, Glenn, you've used up your uh, five minutes. We appreciate your uh, input. Uh, Hey, Glenn, oh, yeah. you forgot Kenny Ito. Uh, oh, Kenny Ito. Yeah, but Kenny didn't lose his life flying over No, Joe no, Sand. but he was, he was shipped off too. Oh, and the Fujiwaras also. Yeah. yeah, they all left, and then they studied really hard. What about Kai, was Kaishima in that group? Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. And three Itos, I think, two, and, two older ones, they were older. And uh, Ray and Ken, and then he had a younger brother in Vietnam. I had an uncle that lived in Pomona, and he was shipped there. Uh, his wife and daughter were put in the concentration camp. Yeah. Harry Sasaki, he was a, came back and was a very good chiropractor here in town for years on D Street. Oh, okay. Yeah. In fact, you probably went to him. He was the only guy in town. Oh, yeah. Because Ray, he, uh, he went overseas about three months before I came home. And then uh, I think about a month or two months after I was home, he got killed. And I don't know, they never said why. But at that time, I don't know if they still do. In the Air Force, you always followed your flight leader. No matter what he did, you followed him. In the Marine Corps, Navy, you could peel off and do your own thing. But uh, in the Air Force, no, you followed your flight leader. I don't know if you remember, well, maybe five, six years ago, there was a group of Thunderbirds practicing up in the desert. And what was it, five of them or four of them went into the ground because they were all following flight leader. And they killed them all. Okay, Glenn, thanks okay. for your testimony. Anybody else in the audience wishing to uh, comment on an item not on the agenda can do so now. Seeing none, we'll close the public communications.
Um, next is the consent calendar, joint city and successor agency, the Chino Redevelopment Agency. Um, you, members of the public or the council may pull an eye for discussion. I have a motion by council member Duncan, seconded by council member Elrod. Please vote. Item passes unanimously. Item 14, under new business, professional services agreement, three system storm drain design project. Our staff report this evening is by associate engineer, Ms. Imani. Ms. Imani. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. For this fiscal year, the City Council budgeted funds in the amount of $120,000 for design of a master plan storm drain system at the following locations. Ross Avenue between Riverside Drive and Walnut Avenue, Walnut Avenue between Ross and Magnolia Avenue, Magnolia Avenue between Walnut and State Route 60 under crossing. On September 9, 2014, staff released a request for proposal or RFP for design services of these projects. On October 7, three firms submitted their proposals and staff reviewed the proposals and since Hewitt Zollers and K&A Engineering were ranked equally, staff evaluated the fee proposals and the schedule for the design phase of this project. Hewitt Zollers Inc. of Ontario was selected at the most, as the most qualified firm with the most expedited schedule for this project. Since the budgeted amount is $120,000, staff is requesting additional appropriation of $41,875 from the unappropriated reserves of the storm drain fund to cover the design costs of this project. It is also a staff's recommendation for the City Council to approve the Professional Services Agreement in the amount of $161,875 for design phase of this project. This concludes my report and I'll be happy to address any questions you may Thank have. Thank you. Uh, prior to Council uh, questions or comments, anybody in the audience wishing to address the Council on this issue? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Uh, Councilman Duncan? Yeah. Imani, uh, am I correct in assuming that there was something wrong with the bid from Alred Engineering? The proposal that they had submitted uh, was rated as the lowest one because they were missing a few items. They were not addressing a few items that we actually were uh, rating them uh, okay. based on, such as the geotechnical services and some other items. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, it's moved by Mayor Pro Temi Lois, seconded by Council Member Howie. Please vote. Item passes unanimously. Okay, uh, Ms. Uh, Imani, you get to the item 15, Professional Service Agreement, Chino Avenue Storm Drains Design Project. Back to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. Uh, for this fiscal year, the City Council budgeted funds for the design and construction of two master plan storm drain at the following location. The first one is on Chino Avenue between Mountain Avenue and Bunker Hill Place to the east of Mountain Avenue. And the second storm drain is also on Chino Avenue, but it's between Benson Avenue and Oaks Avenue. On September 9th again in 2014, staff released a request for proposal for design and construction support services of these projects. And on October 7th, three firms submitted their proposals. After staff reviewed the proposals, k and Engineering of Corona was rated <coughs> the most qualified firm with the lowest overall cost proposal in the amount of $141,507. Therefore, it is the staff's recommendation for the City Council to approve the Professional Services Agreement for this project to k and Engineering. This also concludes my report, and I'll be happy to address any Thank you. questions. Prior to City Council comments or questions, I'll open this for public comment. Anybody wishing to address the Council on this item? 
Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Uh, Councilman Duncan. Yeah, Imani, as part of this project, are they going to fix the lo the launching ramp on uh, on Mountain Avenue at Chino? Actually, that is the reason to have the storm drain there. Um, the the dip that you see there, basically, it's a, a way of conveying water from one side of Mountain Avenue to the other. With this storm drain, we will take care of that also. We will take it out and rework the intersection so we will not have the launching pad anymore. A lot of drivers will really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> We have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Uloa, seconded by Councilman Howie. A please vote. Item passes unanimously. Item 16, purchase order, 10-yard CNG dump truck. Our report this evening is by our Public Works Service Manager, Mr. Kirk Powell. Mr. Powell. Thank you, Mayor, members of the City Council. The City's 1985 10-yard dump truck is need replacement due to depreciation, mechanical conditions, and along with the HMD requirement to replace diesel engines with a cleaner um, fuel engine. Staff prepared bid specifications for model year 2015 10-yard CNG power dump truck. Notice we were published on the city's webpage and packets were sent to local dealerships. A bid opening was conducted with no dealerships responding to the city's solicitation. Upon further research, staff was able to locate an agency that had recently um, completed the bid process for the same type of vehicle. Utilizing the city's joint agency purchasing policy and the County of Los Angeles bid process, Los Angeles Freightliner, Whittier, California, reviewed the city's specifications and provided a letter confirming that they would extend an offer to tag on to the County of Los Angeles bid dated November 14, 2013. Therefore, staff recommends that the City Council approve a purchase order in the amount of $220,377.67 to Los Angeles Freightliner, Whittier, California, for the purchase of one model year 2015 10-yard CNG dump truck and authorize the City Manager to execute all necessary documents on behalf of the City. This concludes my report. Thank you. Prior to Council comment, anybody in the audience wishing to address the Council on this item? Seeing none, the closed public... Uh Tom? Yeah, so um, first of all, I want to commend you, Kurt, for uh, keeping our, our truck for 30 years and keeping, <laughs> keeping it going. And it's all we get 30 years out of the old truck, is that right? Uh, they could you allow us to have a diesel engine, you know, but the emissions are just too bad for that type of vehicle. It's too old. So it's, just, it's just about had enough. Well, it's pro probably hauled quite a bit of waste in, in its time, right? It's used its purpose. You put 10 yards of uh, material 10 in? 10 yards that fit into the box, yes. That's a lot of, that's a lot of material. Okay, very good. That's all. <laughs> Kurt, uh, did we utilize the Carl, Carl Moyer program or MSRC funds to fund this purchase? Yeah, this purchase, um, purchase it wasn't you know, um, viable at the time. We continue to look for opportunities to use the grants to get those for so, the conversion between so the CNG and the diesel. No. Rats. Okay. Any other questions? We have a motion by Councilman Elrod, seconded by Councilmember Duncan. Please vote. New truck. Save the old one for the Christmas parade. You can haul the whole city council in. <laughs> <laughs> Who's, who, who didn't vote? Earl? I'm sorry. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what to do with that dump truck, make a barbecue out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Item passes unanimously. Okay, under mayor and council reports. Uh, first, I would like to give everyone an additional reminder to sign up for the 15th, I can't believe 15 years, the 15th annual Run for Us Memorial 5K Run and Community Walk event on Saturday, February 7th. Uh, the race starts at 8 a.m. at the corner of Central and Chino Avenues. All those who are uh, interested can register at racewire.com or visit chino, uh, www.chinopoa.org. Uh, for more information, you can call 909-334-3087. Finally, it is with sadness that we will be adjourning tonight's meeting in the memory of uh, two longtime and active Chino residents. First, Ruth Agnes McDonough Clark and Ray Grandpa Ortiz, who both passed away early, earlier this month. Uh, Ruth Clark, born in Middleton, Ohio, faced the hardships of the Great Dep Depression before finding a passion in the field of nursing and moving to California with her then soon-to-be husband, Cohen Clark. 
Uh, after their arrival to California, the Clark soon started a privately owned ambulance service on Central Avenue here in Chino. Um, through this company, though the company was sold in 1970, the Clarks continued to work and live and be active members in the community for the entire 55 years that they lived in Chino. Sadly, Ruth passed away on January 2nd at the age of 86 and is survived by her six children, 10 grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. Um, all of us here on the DS uh, knew uh, Ruth very well. Um, she was very active in the uh, St. Margaret's Mary Church. Um, every year at uh, National Day of Prayer, uh, she would <laughs> make sure that uh, uh, when Eunice was mayor that she was there, or was, since I've been mayor that I was there, and you didn't dare stand her up. <laughs> She's a great lady, and her husband Cohen uh, ran for council against me in 1992. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course he lost, And uh, but from that point on he supported me and so did Ruth. And when I ran for mayor he supported me, uh, and Ruth did. And uh, wonderful, just a loving, great couple. You just don't meet too many like that. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a sad time when uh, you lose people like that in your community. Um, uh, next was Ray Grandpa Ortiz. Anybody that has ever done anything in sports in the city of Chino or surrounding area knew who Grandpa Ortiz was. Uh, he was a football and track and field coach and mentored thousands of athletes from Chino High, uh, Don Lugo, the Chino Pumas Yak uh, Track Club, and Chino Pop Warner. Beginning his career in 1954, uh, Grandpa, uh, as his athletes called him, worked tirelessly as a coach and touched the lives of many young athletes. He was dedicated to the athlete's success, a constant support presence at Chino High School football games, and a staple in the Chino community. When I first met uh, Grandpa, uh, I was president of the Chino Pop Warner, it was like 30 years ago, and uh, I would continually walk the field, to check on the teams as they were practicing. So I walked over to Grandpa, he had the, what we call the Mighty Mites, the seven-year-old. And I walk up and I see Grandpa looking at a clipboard, and to his left were two kids in football gear, wrestling. And the rest of the team was, team was doing gr gr drills. And I walked up to Grandpa. I said, uh, Grandpa, he goes, yeah. I said, well, what are these kids doing? He went, having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I went, but that was Grandpa. I mean, uh, uh, all the years that I announced his uh, Puma Invitational track meet, and um, he would get the kids' attention not by criticizing them, he would tease them. He would tease them. And, um, uh, he, he was such a huge asset to this community in, in raising our youth. He not only taught uh, athletics, but citizenship and teamwork. And uh, uh, this coming Thursday night at 7 uh, p.m. at the Chino uh, um, Auditorium, uh, we're going to have a, at Chino High, uh, we're going to have a little memorial service. And the services, the burial services, will be uh, Monday. Uh, it should be in this coming Saturday's paper, the exact arrangements, but uh, I'll be speaking there Thursday night on behalf of uh, Grandpa, and uh, he will be sorely missed. Uh, uh, Eunice, you want to talk about Ruth or yeah. Grandpa? They were both really, really nice people. Ruthie was a character, and I don't think I ever saw her in a bad mood. Uh, she just was a sweet, sweet lady, uh, remembered everybody, always cheerful, and you're right, boy, if she needed you to appear somewhere, <laughs> you, you better, better be go. there. <laughs> you better go. Um, Grandpa, my first time meeting him was a very embarrassing occasion. <laughs> Dennis, you'll remember this. Uh, we were honoring him, and I was mayor at the time, and I called him up, and the gallet was in charge of giving me the information on what I needed to, ra uh, to read, gave me the wrong name for him. And she yeah. put down uh, Grandpa Joe. Ortiz. And so I called him up and, it, and, you know, he was such a sweet man. He never had an ill thing to say about anybody. But he kind of chuckled and he came up and he goes, um, my name's Joe, or Ray. And I said, uh, like an idiot. Uh, no, it says it's Joe. He goes, no, it's Ray. Well, I didn't know whether he was kidding or not. And sure enough, and every time I saw him after that, he had to tease me. He goes, my he name's Ray. Everybody. I said, I know, I know. <laughs> but such a sweet man and always had a pleasant look on his face and a good word to say and he was such an inspiration to the kids because like Dennis said he didn't get upset he was able to get people to do things and kids to do things because he was a positive influence and it's just we're gonna miss him we're gonna miss his presence and I know um, gosh there's a lot of kids that are not gonna have the privilege of being able to be influenced by him but he touched so many people's lives well Ruth I'll never forget 
the first year that President Obama was elected and it came National Prayer Day, all the years prior to that, the president would write a proclamation and you either when you were mayor or I was mayor, you would read the presidential proclamation. Mm -hmm. Well, Obama, President Obama, didn't do it. And... Uh, Ruthie wasn't happy. Oh. <laughs> if Obama would have been there, he'd have been, it'd been all over. Ruthie, she was, she was mad. She's feisty. And uh, he never ever wrote a proclamation from up until this point during the National Day of Prayer. So, yeah, Ruthie was uh, not in a good mood. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Okay, and the rest of the council uh, member uh, reporting, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Eloy, everything That's to report? All. That's all. That's all. Uh, council member Duncan. Yeah. Also, uh, day before yesterday, we lost Bud Copas. He died. Oh, really? I hadn't heard yeah, that. He's a longtime member of the Kiwanis Club, uh, a longtime resident of Chino. Wow. So he's my dad's best passed buddy. Passed away, I think it was at one fifteen in the afternoon. I hadn't heard that. Oh. Is he still living, living up by Union? No, uh -uh, he had moved into Hillsboro. Eddie? Oh. Boy, what a yeah. neat guy. Oh, no. We'll remember him too. Nice guy. Our German. Huh. Um, on January the 8th, I attended a uh, board meeting for the County Retirement Board of Directors. And that afternoon, I also attended a uh, board meeting for the Chafee College Foundation Board of Directors, uh, at which I was appointed to the Investment Committee. So uh, <laughs> we hold our first meeting tomorrow. So they finally decided they had to put money to work and make money. Uh, and plus, we're doing scholarships right now, and it would be really, really nice to see some applicants from Chino. Uh, I did 225 scholarship applications a couple months ago, and there wasn't anybody from Chino or Chino Hills. So we've got free money sitting out there for these students. Uh, all they have to do is apply. Sylvia? <coughs> Absolutely, Sylvia. All right, on uh, January 13th, Councilman Howie and I uh, met in the city manager's office with Rob Burns and uh, held an investment committee meeting. Uh, the most important thing, we, we did our annual review of the investment policy and decided that there were no changes needed this year in the uh, city investment policy. That's a state law requirement every year that that be done. Uh, January 13th, also that evening, I had the pleasure of speaking to a group of local Girl Scouts at the Girl Scouts house <laughs> over on Center Street. I had never been there before, but I had gotten a call a couple months ago. I guess the uh, uh, local Girl Scout, what do you call it, association? The want, yeah, they, they want to sell that house. They want to sell the property. and. This is just an ideal place for the Girl Scouts to meet. It's been there forever. Yeah. Um, it's not something that, that I think that we should support. I, in fact, I would encourage us to do a proclamation and uh, uh, come out against that. They want to take that money from that house and use it elsewhere in Los Angeles County. And, <laughs> of course uh, they do. So of course. The yep. trying to. I don't think that's a good idea. And on the January 20th, today, I uh, attended a investment committee meeting at uh, SB Serra in beautiful downtown San Bernardino. That's the end of my report. Thank you. Councilman Howie? Oh. Thank you, Mayor. You know, Eunice, I was just thinking back to what well, I thought that was a good one with uh, Grandpa Ortiz, but one of, one of the more embarrassing things I think you had was when you uh, 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 who was who was our um, um, uh, my gosh? I've all of a sudden I forgot his name. Um, our horse guy in town, George, George Putnam. George, when oh, George Putnam. Putnam had you down here, and he was <laughs> oh, yeah. his arm around you, oh, and he yeah. was calling you his little darling. Oh whatever. yeah, that, that was a classic moment. <laughs> I, I wish you, we had to get that as a tape. And get yeah, that Eunice's that. Eunice's yeah. face looked like a red light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you sure his hand was on his shoulder? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd rather have his. I'd rather have his quote 
<laughs> what next? Cat on a stick? Yeah, oh, cat yeah. on a stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a that was a classic times uh, in, in our meetings. We've had some good we've had some good ones over the years. And but, then when uh, I had something to present, and the whole thing fell apart. Right. Yeah. Because the frame wasn't put together. Oh yeah. God. I yeah. don't know. I went maybe we could do. <laughs> and maybe we could do a video of all of the mayor's the embarrass, bloopers? embarrassing bloopers or the moments. Bloopers. We should probably oh, think about doing God. that. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, <laughs> so on the eighth of January in the city manager's office, I attended the. Uh, we had a meeting regarding the 2015 uh, Special Olympic World Summer Games that are coming to Los Angeles. So I guess the World uh, Special Olympics haven't been in the United States for about 16 years. And they're coming to Los Angeles in July, and the city of Chino is going to be hosting a number of the athletes for a day. So we're going to give them lunch and take them around and show them a little bit of Chino and uh, maybe a summer concert. We're talking about that, and we probably have close to maybe 100. Uh, we'll be finding, we'll be putting out a press release soon about which country, I think two different countries we're going to have, so that's going to be very exciting. Um, that's coming up, um, and I'll keep you posted, the we'll, city will keep you posted, we still got about six months to go before that happens, but uh, that's going to be an exciting time here this summer in China. Um, on the 8th, I also attended a CDA meeting, and on the 13th uh, with Councilman Duncan, we had the finance uh, meeting, and, and Glenn talked about what we said about that. Um, let's see, Owen, oh, uh, the 12th, I attended the Chino Community Center Corporation's uh, uh, annual, uh, well, their monthly meeting. And they have a new fundraiser coming out in April. Uh, the, the four C's or the five C's, I don't know, I can't count all the four C's. C's. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Somebody said five C's, but I don't think it's. Anyway, uh, so instead of um, the Sweethearts Ball this year, they're going to have a dinner murder mystery play being up at, I think, up at Los Serrano. So uh, that's going to be kind of a fun evening and a little different. Uh, I think one of the theater, uh, John Lynn from the theater is going to be putting the production on. He's pretty, he's a pretty talented guy. So it's going to be a fun evening. That's coming up in April uh, for the Four C's. And um, let's see. Last but not least, uh, this Sunday, the 25th, is uh, starting in Chino Hills. Coming to Chino, going back to Chino Hills, is the human trafficking uh, walk uh, uh, for for human trafficking against human trafficking, and that's. Starts at Sunday at three o'clock and at the shops in Chino Hills comes all the way to our spectrum and goes back and has, there's a ceremony for that. So if you have a chance, attend that's free and uh, get a good little bit of walking in, get some exercise. So that's coming up this Sunday. That concludes my comments. Thank you, Councilman Elrod. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, looking back at Cohen and Ruth Clark, they started the first you know ambulance oh, company yeah. in Chino. And he was quite a real good businessman. He was a nice guy. Yeah, he's a great and guy. And then Bud Coppice. I could give you stories about Bud Coppice. I mean, he, he was my dad's best. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think the Statue of Limitations <laughs> ran out on this one. Oh, yeah. We had, when we had the meat shop, we, our building was in back and the front was a tire place. And he'd always come stop there and talk to him for a while and then drive back to us and talk to us. And my dad, you know, we could see everything going on in front. Well, he parked his car in front of the tire shop and my dad goes, hey, pull that car around the back. What the heck? So I went out there, jumped in the police car. He always had it running. Pull it behind the house, <laughs> meat shop. But come walking out of that tire shop and he looked around. <laughs> like, what in the world happened? You know, who would take my, you know, police sheriff car, I guess it was. Yeah. And so my dad, he got laughing. and So he walks out the side of the shop and he's laughing. And he looks back and sees my dad. Then he figured out what happened. But Bud was a good guy. I think... Uh -huh. He was the first constable in Chino, and he, uh, I don't think he ever wrote a ticket in his life. I mean, he, he was just a good guy. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I tell you, there were some fun times with Bud. Uh, he's really going to be missed. I didn't know he was even in the old folks home up on Central. But I wonder how old was he? About 90. Had to be. Had to be 90. No, he and Holly Graham were about the same age. Yeah, Holly was uh, 89, wasn't he? I can't remember I now. But... 80s. Oh, no, he was... Uh, he was in the late years. You never knew how old Holly was because he never changed. Well, that's true. Yeah, Bud, um, Bud lived right up the street from us, and if he were outside, he'd always stop and talk. Oh, yeah. Big smile on his face. And he, um, in fact, when I ran for council the first time, um, he had a bet uh, with uh, Holly Graham and Joe Borba. And Joe thought I'd lose, and Holly and Bud thought I'd win. And they were just thrilled when I did, and they had to rub it into Joe Borba. 
He was he was sure that I was going to lose. He was just really sweet. Bought a barn for me once, carried it down the street on the back of a tractor. That was interesting. Oh, he had racehorses? Yeah, he had racehorses. Mm -hmm. And they, he and his wife He's raised um, guide dogs. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They raised guide dogs. I remember he lived, nice I forget what street he lived off of Walnut, but uh, he paid cash for a house there, him and his wife. So here there's a big investigation. How could you know a constable buy a house cash? His wife came from a very wealthy family. Very wealthy family. family from San Diego. And uh, it was funny, but you never you would never know he had any money at all. I mean he was just the down to earth this guy. So nice people. But they're both gonna be missed. I would like to call the chief up because I had a situation about a week and a half ago that uh, it's these people calling on the phone saying you won sweet steaks and stuff like that. And uh, I would like to her to give the public a little lesson on that. Thank you, Councilman Elrod. Mayor and Mayor Yates and members of the council, what, what Councilman Elrod was referring to is we are seeing a continuance of criminals either preying upon some of our local residents in the city through what we call scams. And these scams come in several different forms or ways. Sometimes they come in the form of lottery scams where people approach people outside of a market or a bank and they'll explain to them, hey, I have this lottery ticket, but because I'm not a legal citizen, if you can help me, if you give me, I'll split the winnings with you. It's a $10,000 winning ticket. If you'll give me $3,000, help me get the, the money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The number one thing I can explain to you about scams is you shouldn't have to pay money to help anybody get money out of something. You don't have to be a, a legal citizen within the, the, the country to collect on any type of winnings or anything of that nature. This week, uh, we came across another scam where we have people calling into people's homes. And these scams are a little bit more common. And what they look like is somebody will call your house and say, hey, you've won a, a sweepstakes of some sort, like a publisher's clearinghouse sweepstake or some other drawing. And they'll tell you, hey, you have $5 million waiting to collect from you. We need to get some additional information. We need wiring fees. We need money to transport. We need additional payment from you, an upfront payment from you to transfer the money to your home. They're very, very common. They come in also, there's several different ways these criminals do this. They'll ask you to mail them green dot cards, they'll ask you to wire money to them. They're, again, they're all very, very suspicious. The biggest issue is if you haven't entered any type of lottery or publisher's clearinghouse, don't think for a second that you've won. Mm -hmm. And even if for some reason you have and they contact you and ask you for payment or for money, you haven't won. The number one issue here to point out is if you have to pay to receive a cash settlement for a prize that you have won, it is a scam. These criminals are very good. They're very skilled. They, they, anybody can be the victim of this. A lot of times people's perhaps greed or self-satisfaction will get in the way of them using common sense prior to proceeding with partaking in some of these issues. But sometimes also they prey on uh, aging, the aging community, or they may not be as, as sharp-minded any longer or get confused and want to take part in this. Well, again, the takeaway from this is please, please do not pay money to receive money in any type of scam. If you are contacted by somebody of this nature and believe you've been the victim of this, please contact the Chino Police Department. We'll come out, we'll help you investigate it. But under no circumstances should you partake in this. Thank Anything you, else? I, no, I think. Yeah, another common one is that I've seen a lot lately is uh, somebody calling up saying they're from the IRS, Absolutely. and you have to give them five thousand dollars by tomorrow. The IRS does not call. ever, ever call people, and they certainly wouldn't call you and ask you for money. No, they will not. They and and they will not call you and tell you before they're going to serve a search warrant on your home. That's another one. Hey, we're going to serve a search warrant if you don't do this. Do not. Do not pay people money over the phone. Contact the police department. We'll help you. You can look these phone numbers up on the internet. Do not wire money out of the country. Do not send money to people over the phone or, or partake in any of this nature. And Councilman Elrod, we will also miss Bud Copas uh, at the Coppice at the Chino Police Department. He has a very, very nice uh, corner and memorial in our museum. If any of you are over at the police department sometime and you would like to see it, we'd be honored to show it to you. Thank he was you. He's a heck of a good guy. You got anything else, sir? No, no, I'm good. <laughs> the city manager, you have an announcement to make. Yes, I'd like uh, to introduce our new um, director of human resources and risk management, Anthony Arroyo. 
He comes to us from the city of Covina. Um, he's supported by his wife and uh, two kids. And uh, the only reservation I had in hiring this gentleman is that he's an alumni of the University of Southern California. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but Anthony, on behalf of the city, welcome to the family. Fight on. <laughs> Just made my husband very yeah. happy. Yeah, Boswell over there in the audience go whoopee. <laughs> Thank you, City Manager Ballantyne, members of the City Council Mayor. It's a pleasure to be part of this organization, and I look forward to working with the council in the next coming months with uh, contract negotiations coming up. So, Ooh, my door is always open. If you're in the area, please uh, stop on by. Thank you. Well, welcome. Yeah, welcome to the Chino family. I Thank think. you very much. It's yeah, truly an honor. It's one of the best decisions you've ever made in your life. I realize that it is, okay. <laughs> despite the, uh, the, the the minority group with the, the Bruins fans. But yeah, I'll, I'll deal that. with it. <laughs> Hey, well, when we interviewed Matt, Matt, that was the only negative he had on his um, <laughs> resume. That's right. Thank you. Uh, city, city Attorney, Mr. Gutierrez. I don't have a report. Uh, Chief Comstock, anything else? No, sir. Chief Shackelford, the fire no, department. No, no, no. Okay, thank you. Um, we will adjourn. The next meeting of the City Council will be held on Tuesday, February 3rd, 2015, at 7 p.m. Closed session at 6 if necessary. We stand adjourned. Have a great evening. <laughs>